How's it going, ladies and gents? Boys and girls, Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. I have in the building the Logitech Combo Touch keyboard case for the seventh generation 10.2 inch iPad. And while it's not perfect, this $150 case is pretty awesome. Check out the full review. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. All right, so guys, this is the Logitech Combo Touch keyboard case for the iPad 7th generation. So here it is unboxed. It basically is comprised of two pieces. This right here, the back cover. Don't forget the instructions, but you also have the keyboard itself. And this is the thing that's most exciting right here. This keyboard, not only is it great to type on, plenty of key travel, well-spaced keys, it's also smart connector compatible. So there's nothing to charge, no batteries inside, no pairing you have to do. You just connect it and it starts working. But the real cool thing about this keyboard is this right here, the built-in trackpad that supports multi-touch gestures. So on the side of the trackpad, you'll find the same canvas material that makes up the rest of the cover, including the backside of the keyboard. But notice this, look at that key travel. It's excellent. Certainly better than what you'll find on the smart keyboard from Apple. And it's just really nice to type on in my opinion. Like I said, well-spaced keys, lots of key travel there. You even have those shortcut keys at the top row. And like I said, on the back, you get that same canvas material. Now there is sort of a sharp edge on the keyboard portion, something to note. We'll talk about that a bit later, but notice you have all your cutouts. So you have your camera cutout, your microphone hole, ports for the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, your side button, top microphone, of course your volume buttons as well. So it completely covers the entire perimeter of your iPad. This thing is a great way to protect your seventh generation iPad. And notice this, you get a little loop there for inserting an Apple Pencil or the Logitech Crayon. So. You may be wondering, how do I prop this thing up? Well, there you go, a built-in kickstand that's adjustable up to 50 degrees, as you can see here. And there are no preset areas to adjust the kickstand. You can adjust it and finesse it exactly how you want it. That's kind of the cool thing about this. You can get it just dialed in to your liking. Now, with everything combined, you can see this thing is a little bit on the bulky side. You're gonna see that even more so when we put our iPad inside the seventh generation 10.2 inch iPad. And as you can see, inserting it is easy. So you can see the camera, perfect cutout there. All the ports are perfectly aligned. Logitech obviously knows what they're doing when it comes to making keyboard cases for the iPad. They've been doing it for years. This one is no exception. All right, so now let's go ahead and connect the smart connector. There you go. The keyboard portion magnetically attaches to the iPad and the cover also magnetically locks into place. So let's go ahead and get this thing in a typing mode. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our Apple Pencil and just make it all complete. So just slide the Apple Pencil in the loop like that. You can also use the Logitech Crayon if you own that as well. So as you can see folks, $150. Oftentimes you can get that seventh generation iPad for around $250. So we're looking at about $400 for the iPad plus keyboard case, and then you add on another $100 for the Apple Pencil, $500 total for this package. That is admittedly pretty amazing. Now look at all these different angles you can dial in to get just the perfect viewing angle that works for you. You can make it low, you can make it high, close it just like that. So that was typing mode, but remove the keyboard portion and now you have reading mode and then use that kickstand with the keyboard removed. Now you have creative mode or drawing mode, perfectly angled for your Apple Pencil. And then of course you have movie mode. So we can just watch TV or watch our favorite movies or watch your favorite YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done that already. But obviously the main reason why you would consider purchasing the Logitech Combo Touch keyboard case for iPad 7 is for its ability to enhance your typing experience. And like I said from the outset, this is a great keyboard, has lots of key travel, even the keys are backlit and it's all powered by the iPad itself thanks to the smart connection. But the real cool thing about this thing is the built-in trackpad. Now this is a mechanical trackpad, it uses a diving board style mechanism. So in other words, there are moving parts. It's not a solid state trackpad like the Magic Trackpad for the MacBook Pro. 
So with that being said, when you click your finger, it actually moves the trackpad. You can actually feel it depress. Now the thing is, this is already a small little area on this trackpad, it's very tiny, but because it uses a diving board mechanical mechanism, there are dead zones at the top of the trackpad where you can't actually register a press. So if you press here, nothing happens because it doesn't actually even move. So with that in mind, I highly recommend going to settings, general trackpad and enabling tap to click. That way you get a larger surface area for which to interact with the trackpad when clicking. And don't forget it supports multi-touch gestures as well. So you can use four finger swipes to go back to the home screen or a two finger swipe to swipe between applications. You can also two finger tap to open context menus. I did notice some occasional bugs with the trackpad, specifically when scrolling in Safari or when performing a two finger tap for right clicking. On rare occasions, the touches just didn't seem like they wanted to register, but hopefully this can be fixed via software. You can easily update the firmware on the keyboard. Be sure to watch our full video as we break down all the gestures related to the trackpad. Now, as you can see, like I mentioned earlier, this is not a thin and light package when combined together with your iPad. First of all, as you can see, it's quite thick and it's also fairly heavy at about 2.5 pounds. Now, compare that to the MacBook Air that just launched. Here's the MacBook Air, obviously thinner than the iPad 7 when in this keyboard case and it's only 0.3 pounds heavier. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. When combined, it results in a fairly bulky setup that not everyone is going to appreciate. But with that being said, one of the key benefits of this keyboard case is the protection that it provides your iPad. I mean, it is some of the best protection that you'll find for the seventh generation iPad. If I drop my iPad with this case on, I honestly would have no worries. So while bulky, that's a definite benefit. But here's a question, and I was super curious to find this out. Is it possible just to connect the iPad to the keyboard portion of this case? Well, I had to try it out. So, yes, it does connect to the smart connector just like that. And it, as you can see, it is a uh, very, very thin. Uh, one of the downsides, you do get that sharp edge on the keyboard portion of the case. That is a little bit more prominent without the, the matching case, or should I say the matching cover on the back to meet it when you have it closed. But here's another problem. There is no kickstand because you don't have that back protective cover on. So the iPad just sort of flops around and you know, there's no way to, to prop it up just with the iPad itself. But use something like this or any other object. This is the, um, uh, what is this? The slope from Whip Labs. Actually my favorite way to prop up my iPad and my iPhone, elegant design, and it has a little washable adhesive that you can reuse over and over, it's really cool. So I just decided to use the slope. I put the slope behind the iPad, connect it to the Logitech keyboard, just open it up like that, rest it against it, and I mean, it works. No problem, right? So this is a way if you really wanna go thin and light, you love the keyboard, you love the trackpad, but you, you're not totally in love with that bulky back cover. Well, this is the way to do it. The problem is you just have to find a way to prop up your iPad when out and about, but that shouldn't be too hard. I mean, anything that's going to have enough, you know, have enough weight behind the iPad to keep it from pushing it over should be totally fine. You don't have to use a slope or anything like that. I just think it looks pretty cool. So again, like I said, you do get that little sharp edge when closed, it's a little bit more prominent when closed, but as you can see, it is a much slimmer and trimmer package when just using the keyboard alone. So that is an option in case you wanna do that. Now, here's another question. How does it work with lap typing? So obviously I'm gonna need the full, full deal here with the kickstand, but as you can see, I mean, it's, it's not perfect, it's not perfectly stable, but it does work in a pinch. Certainly works better than the smart keyboard. Uh, definitely more stable than that. The only problem that I can see basically from this setup is that if you're, if you don't have like long legs, it, it may sort of slide off the knees. And again, that could present a, another potential stability issue. But as you can see, you can adjust this thing with the, with the back kickstand and you have all sorts of angles that work for you. Even if you open it all the way up like that, it still is fairly stable. Like I said, not perfect, but in a pinch, definitely it will work on your lap. So I think this thing is pretty awesome overall. I mean, it's super flexible, 
There's just so much you can do with it. You have a trackpad built in. You have a great keyboard built in. You have smart connector support. You have an Apple Pencil holder. The keys are even backlit. You have four stages of backlighting. So one, two, three, four. There we go. You can even go in and adjust the backlight timeout speed and duration if you want to do that using the Logitech control app. And that also allows you to facilitate firmware updates as well. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the Logitech Combo Touch keyboard case for iPad 7. It's a mouthful, but this is the real deal for only 150 bucks. You know, it's hard to complain. Built-in shortcut keys at the top as well. As mentioned, all together, it results in a fairly bulky experience, but if you can live with that, this is a solid keyboard. Now, one thing I will mention is that the trackpad was a little bit buggy for me in certain rare instances. For instance, when scrolling in Safari with two fingers, sometimes it would just totally skip and it would stop scrolling. Other times when I try to use a two finger right click gesture, it wouldn't register. It happened rarely, but I wanted to mention it. Hopefully that can be updated via software. So ladies and gentlemen, tell me, what do you guys think about this keyboard case? Let me know down below in the comment section and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.